Hi, and welcome back. In today's episode of the How To Series, I'm gonna show you how to change the transmission fluid on the Tremec TR6060 manual transmission. This transmission can be found in many different vehicles. Behind me is my Camaro SS1LE, but this transmission is also found in various years of the Shelby GT500, the C6 Corvette, different Cadillacs, the ATS-V, CTS-V, and of course the CT4 and 5V Blackwings, along with the Dodge Viper and Dodge Challenger. And in some cases, if you're watching this down under, your Falcon and Holden specialty vehicles also use the Tremec TR6060. So come with me, I'll show you what we need to do to change the fluid out. Here's some of the tools and items that we're gonna need to do the fluid change on your Tramic TR6060. You'll want a 3 8 ratcheting wrench. The drain plug and fill plug both use a 3 8 wrench socket. And alternatively, there is a temperature sensor port that you can drain the fluid from as well that you'll need a 7 8 inch box wrench or a 7 8 inch deep well socket. And the reason that you'll want the deep well socket is to make sure that that temperature sensor is torqued to spec. Speaking of torque settings, you'll want a torque wrench. I'm using a 3 8 here because it gives me a little more room than a half inch. And the torque setting for the fill plug, the drain plug, and the temperature sensor are all 20 foot pounds. You'll also want some brake clean to clean up any residual fluid, spills, messes, whatever it might be. And then of course, you're gonna need the fluid itself. The Tremec TR6060 uses just under four quarts of fluid, so make sure that you have at least four quarts available for you. To get the fluid into the transmission, I'm gonna use a transfer pump. In this case, I'm using a Slippery peat gallon connector. It has a bunch of different adapters for the different size bottles that you may encounter. And then of course, you're gonna want a thread sealant for the fill plug, drain plug, and the temperature sensor port. Make sure you grab yourself a drip tray or drip pan. And of course you'll want a fluid container for all of the old fluid to dump out into. As a pro tip, if you're running into issues with a 3 8 ratchet and not being able to break loose the drain plug or the fill plug, you can use a half inch ratchet wrench with a half inch to 3 8 reducer and this will give you a little bit more leverage if you need it. All right, here we are under the car, and this is the driver's side of the vehicle, uh, front of the vehicle that way, rear of the vehicle is going that way. And what you can see here is the fill plug up top here. There is this trans line that uh, is in the way of loosening that plug. And then this is the temperature sensor port. We're gonna use the temperature sensor port to drain the fluid. Uh, this is listed as an alternative method within the service manual. And that's because on the Camaro, the drain plug is actually back here and it's not in an easy spot to get to. So um, I do have an older video that I made where I drain the fluid from the drain plug back here. And I'll show a clip of that right now is it's a complete mess. It's really unnecessary. So we're gonna go ahead and use the temperature sensor port for draining. And the fill plug is still the fill plug that we're gonna use. Now, first thing we wanna do is make sure that we can actually loosen the fill plug because if we can't loosen the fill plug, we definitely don't wanna drain all of the fluid out if we don't have a way to put it back in there. So let's get started. Um, easiest way to make some space with this line is just kind of push on it. You'll push it towards the outside of the vehicle. It's on a little push pin, so you can easily just push that out of the way uh, and then you'll snap it back into place once you're done. So you'll grab your 3 8 ratchet and insert it into the 3 8 socket on the fill plug. And you do want to make sure that you have your drain pan underneath. And you could see that that was very loose, 
Doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get that in. We're gonna go ahead and loosen this all the way, as I mentioned before, to make sure that we can fill it up. So we'll pull that out. You'll see the fluid start to drip and that's normal. Now that we have the fill plug loose, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the temperature sensor port. Now there is a sensor connected to this and uh, using your fingers, the tab is on the top side. You can just pull and disconnect that and kind of set it aside. You can tuck it in behind this trans line that we loosened earlier so it doesn't get in the way of anything. And then we'll grab our 7 8 wrench and loosen this up. While you're waiting for the fluid to drain out of the transmission, bring your fill plug and temperature sensor over to your workbench or wherever you might wanna be and grab some of the high performance thread sealant so that we can reapply some of the sealant to the threads here. Now, you'll notice that the sealant on the factory or the sealant that comes from the factory, I should say, is this reddish orange brown color and uh, I believe it's made by Loctite. It's called like Vibramax. It is about $150 for a liter, and that's about the smallest that you can get it in. Now, if you look at the service manual, they give you an alternative part for some AC Delco high-performance thread sealant, which I'll have right here. Of course, links will be in the description where you can pick all of that up as well. And if you also don't wanna spend the money on the AC Delco version, Permatex makes the same stuff, high performance thread sealant, part number 56521. So we're just going to apply just a, just a little bit and work it around the threads. This is uh, one of those situations where less is more, you don't wanna overdo it with this stuff. Get some on the fill plug and then make sure you get some on the temperature sensor as well. Let those set for a bit. They'll be ready to go back in. Now that your transmission fluid has finished draining out, you can use a rag, microfiber cloth, shop towel, whatever it might be. Just kind of wipe this up a little bit here. And then you'll grab your transmission temperature sensor and Start to thread that back in. Now that you've got your temperature sensor threaded back in, go ahead and get it torqued to spec here. Now that we have that torqued down, you can go ahead and plug your sensor back in. And now we can grab the bottle of transmission fluid and the pump and insert the hose coming from the pump into the fill port at the top. And then you wanna make sure you have your drip tray ready because as this goes in, you might get some spillage. So we'll drag that in here as well. And then you just start pumping the fluid into the transmission till it starts to pour out. So I mentioned earlier, it's just under four quarts to get to full, uh, the service manual does suggest removing 240 milliliters or roughly eight ounces of fluid. This is more of a preventative measure for shops. Um, I'll kind of explain why in a moment here. I'm gonna interrupt the video for a moment because I wanna cover something in depth. The service manual calls out to remove 240 milliliters of fluid or roughly eight ounces. Uh, after the fluid starts to 
seep out of the fill hole. And the reason that they do this, it's mainly kind of a cover your ass type of thing. Because if you're a shop owner or a dealership who is doing this service and you don't remove a little bit of the fluid, what can happen is as the fluid expands, it can seep out of the vent ports at the top and your customer would come back with a claim that their transmission fluid is leaking. And they don't wanna deal with a return customer for something that isn't necessarily true. So while the service manual calls out to remove eight ounces, I'm not gonna do that. That's not something I've ever done for my 2018 Camaro. I've done other transmission fluid changes on this one, and I've never had a problem with just filling it until it starts to pour out. Back to the install. All right, and as you can see, I've gone through my fourth bottle. Now, I didn't completely empty every single bottle out here, and you can see that this is pretty steadily pouring out. So I'm going to remove fill tube. Let that drain the rest of the way out. And then we can put the fill plug in we should be all set, just ready to clean it up. You can speed up that process by using a rag to soak some of that out of there. Right, we're gonna give it one last wipe down here. Put one of these rags into that fill hole just to soak up some more of the fluid. And then we'll put the fill plug back on. Go ahead and wipe down the area surrounding, get the torque wrench uh, again just a 3 8 torque wrench here set to 20 foot pounds we'll get this tightened up spray it down with some brake cleaner and wipe it down and make sure to pop the transmission line back in place and you are all set with your transmission fluid swap all right we're all done we changed the transmission fluid on your tremec tr6060 all you got to do now is get the car back on its wheels take it for a spin and just double check for any kind of transmission fluid leaks over the next couple of days keep in mind if you're tracking your vehicle if you're doing this immediately after your fluid change, if the fluid gets really hot, it could expand and leak out of those vent seepage holes. That's normal. But if you're finding big puddles, get back under there, check to make sure everything's tightened up. For now, we're all done. I'll catch you on the next video. Till the next time, till the next project. See you then.